Uh, so it finishes then. Milan nil, Newcastle nil. A point apiece in their opening match as we welcome in. Uh, Gabon Cotier is here, as is uh, Frank Leboeuf. Uh, Newcastle will be delighted, won't they, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not with the way they played. Oh, but you but, take a point back but, after but, that but, performance. But the fact that they, they were so outplayed in this game uh, that they have basically stolen a point uh, away in the group. And, you know, from Milan's perspective, they will be kicking themselves with, you know, the pressure they had, with the breakaways they had, with the pace down the, down the flanks and, and just the poor finishing. And we saw little clips of it there, but there was a lot more than that. But, yeah, from a Newcastle perspective, you play like that in this competition continuously and you're definitely going out. There's no doubt about it, right? There's just there's a lack of cohesion this season. Mm. Match day one... Aston Villa was a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, we know that. Villa got some injuries. It was a close game for a while. Then Newcastle kicked on and we thought, wow, is this, what, is this is what's going to come for the rest of the season? And they've just completely gone flat since then. They did get a victory at the weekend, but they've not played well. They've not played well in the middle of the park. Uh, they haven't played well in forward areas and they got completely outplayed by a Milan side that got battered at the weekend, yeah. by the way. A Milan side that were lacking confidence off the back of the Inter Milan thrashing, and yet they completely outplayed Newcastle. Yeah, what a response this was for <coughs> Milan, of course, criticised in all corners after that thrashing by Inter. Mm -hmm. It's just a final third. And if you're, with, if you're playing with Rafael Leal, as yeah, good as no. he is, it must be so frustrating at times. Frustrating to play with him, frustrating to coach him, frustrating to support him as a fan, frustrating to cover him as a journalist. Because the talent is clearly there, but you see this sort of attitude and this sort of arrogance and carelessness when it comes to finishing a chance. Now, look, I'm not against a back heel, right? If that's the best solution to a problem that is presented to you on the field, sure, go do the back heel. I'm not taking that away from you. It's just a lack of responsibility and understanding that it's not needed in that moment. The game is still 0-0. You're not winning for nothing. It's still 0-0. Here's a chance. Put it away, go celebrate, be the hero. Instead, you try to do a back heel. And mind you, he's not that kind of player. He's more of athleticism. He's more of running into open spaces. He's more of change of pace and speed and, and strength. Now he tries to do a back heel. And it's so poorly done that he hits himself. He hits his standing leg with the right foot as he's trying to do the back heel. So it's embarrassing on so many levels. But as a, as a teammate, it, it would drive me crazy because it takes a lot for us to be able to create the chance. Now we have the opportunity. Let's go up and, and, and so that we can win the game, so that we can control everything, so that we can feel better about ourselves given what we just suffered through on the weekend. And this is what you decide to do? Now, I'll say, okay, fine. This is what you decide to do? No problem. But then go and score a goal then. Go and make up for it. And that didn't happen again. And again, and again, and it's too many missed chances, too many missed opportunities, too many moments where you say, the potential is there, the talent is there. But until you deliver on that, this is just a guy of what might have been, what could have been, and a guy that is going to drive his teammates crazy. Gab, so many positives for Milan today, but of course the one big important negative is that they didn't get the three points. Yeah, and it's going to feel like, uh, like obviously, like two points dropped given the way, uh, given the way they play. But it was interesting... Stefano Pioli, uh, after the game, while obviously bemoaning, uh, you know, the finishing and, 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 and Pope's goalkeeping and all that stuff, he did make, he, made, he did look a little bit satisfied. He, he, looked, he looked proud of the performance. And, you know, sometimes we say it doesn't matter, but he, me and I were absolutely spanked at the weekend um, mm. in the Derby. And I think there was some carryover that they wanted to show, guys, this is the way forward. We can play this way. Uh, against a team that's also going to sit deep and, and try to hit on the counter, which is what you know, Newcastle tried to do. Um, and they played really, really well. I mean, you look at that, you know, expected goals are what they are. Look at the shots on goals. Those numbers, I think, pretty much uh, tell their own story. So um, I think inside he's satisfied, uh, but I agree with Ali. He'll probably have a word with, uh, with Rafael Leal there. Uh, how surprised were you? by how good Milan were or how poor Newcastle were today, Frank? Uh, 
I'm very surprised by Milan because, you know, after losing in a derby 5-1, you know, and you playing in the Champions League game, um, you know that you fans uh, are expecting a reaction from you. They did very well and a uh, very unexpected reaction because it's so hard to uh, be that good uh, after such a, a defeat. And uh, um, I, 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 I felt, you know, Proud of the players, you know, fighting for, for the clubs and their colors. And uh, that was a good point. Yes, they didn't score. Yes, Leao uh, made a fool about himself. But uh, uh, overall, I understand why the coach, uh, I cannot smile at, the, at his face at the end of the game. Newcastle, it's quite understandable that I would say it's a frustration because they were too shy, because they didn't want to show anything. And Craig is right. If they keep on doing like that, they're going to be kicked out. So they would have to try something. Um, the coach will have to say that is not enough in order to carry on to uh, just try to pretend. Uh, sometimes I saw uh, passes even for, from experienced players like Trippier uh, passing backwards the, the ball just to keep it, not to try anything forward. And I was frustrated by the way they decided to play their game, which was kind of, OK, we get the point, And if we get the point, we're happy. We go back to Newcastle and uh, find, find by us. That's not enough. That's not enough because you will have a big game next week at home uh, against uh, Paris Saint-Germain. And Paris Saint-Germain is going to come to win. And if you lose, you're almost already out. And some interesting quotes from him. After the game, of course, returning to Milan, saying, I cannot disguise my passion for Milan. I didn't disguise it when I was at Brescia, nor playing for Milan, and I won't now that I'm a Newcastle. I would not be possible or desirable to hide this passion. What do you make of that, Craig? <laughs> well, I'm making it. He's quite passionate about, <laughs> about Milan. And Brescia. <laughs> but, uh, look, I'm not suggesting that he's trying any less. I just... I just don't feel you need to be making these comments when people know the scenario probably and you're in a foreign country and you're starting a, basically a new career at a new club uh, and you're trying to make headway, which has been difficult. He had a knock off the back of the international games, I believe, and that's why he wasn't uh, included at the weekend from the starting 11. But him and Guimarães, for me... I think there's a lot of questions about whether, whether this can work, as you know, whether it's a two or a three in there, and you know they're both kind. Of, they're not completely similar, but they both want to do the same things at times. Maybe Tenali will look to get forward a little bit more these days. But yeah, I, I don't particularly when you've had another quiet game. I don't what you did, and he's not alone. I don't really need to really need to uh, understand why you need to be making he's saying about you know Newcastle fans are not really interested now and what he thinks about Milan or Brescia or, or the national team. All they want to know is, what can you do for us? Yeah. Uh, and at the moment, it's been a really difficult start, apart from the Villa game, for this Newcastle midfield. Frank, if you went back, say, Chelsea, Strasbourg, would you feel the need to say these sort of things? No, no, not at all. Because, uh, as Craig said, you know, the fans don't need to know that. It's between you and you. And uh, just said you're going to fight for your colours, your new colours, and shut up. It's like, it's like Messi crying, you know, leaving Barcelona and uh, signing for Paris Saint-Germain straight after. Or Ramos crying after leaving Ra Real Madrid. Why, what do you think the fans are thinking? That she's just a backup. It just, you don't really fancy coming to the club. It just, you go there uh, because it's a good challenge, but not because you want to give everything. He, he wants to give everything for Milan. That's what he's saying. And that it's honorable, but stay at Milan. Don't go to Newcastle then. Go on, Gap. It, no, I, I like to say this. Like, there's a whole narrative about Tonali's departure uh, from Milan, which you know, basically suggests that Milan pushed him out the door because they needed the money to to go and balance the books. And, you know, uh, even tonight people are saying, oh, it's almost like they sacrificed Tonali to go and sign four other players, four, four starters now. All of which is true to some point, but Tonali had a contract at Milan. Tonali's agent went in there and said, look, we have this big offer from elsewhere. They're offering us um, a ton more money than, 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 and I think Milan were prepared to look at a new contract as well. Um, at some point, he made the decision to leave. Uh, so I, I think this whole feeding this this, this narrative where uh, you know when he talks to the Italian media, because these impressions, of course, posed by the Italian media, mm. um, 
he's not helping himself. He's not helping himself because these quotes get get picked up and people like, like Frank and Craig rightly, you know, react the way they do. You don't need to say that. You know, you can say, look, I was a Milan fan all my life. That's not going to change. But now I'm going to give everything I have for Newcastle because I'm a professional. And just leave it at that. Don't get into this whole business uh, that, you know, you were forced to go to Newcastle, which a lot of people are are peddling in Italy, which is A, incorrect, and B, doesn't help Tonali at all. How would Shaka feel? Mayor of Newcastle, mm. seeing his city... <laughs> well, he's, re well, he's refused to come on today. <laughs> Dis yes. Disrespected like that. He's heard that. Like, like, Frank, just don't say anything. Like, why, why do you have to open that door? No, and... He would have known, because I'm sure as he's coming off the field, he noticed, as everybody else noticed, because they've made it clear to show it on TV, how much the people of Milan love Sandro Tonali and clapping for yeah. him. You know who else is watching that at home? Newcastle fans. Yeah. And then yeah. when you're asked about it, then you double down and say, well, my passion, my heart, everything is with Milan. You know who else is listening to that and reading that? Newcastle fans. And where are you playing this weekend? Newcastle. Yeah. These are the people that are now paying your salary. This is a club that now should be at the forefront of your priorities. And when you say things like this, you expose yourself. You don't want to be doing that. Don't give, don't give any opportunity for a downturn in performance or a downturn in results for fans to find something that's maybe not there, but they think is because you've said something. And that's what fans will do. We saw it, with, in some sense, with Lukaku at Chelsea. Very much so, yeah. Who, you know, wanted to go back to Milan, never wanted to be back at Chelsea. That became a very difficult scenario. Now, we're a long way from that, but Gab is correct. Be a little cuter. When the media are pushing these questions and narrative towards you, it's quite simplistic just to turn around and say, this was great, this is a new chapter, I am committed fully to my decision at Newcastle, and you move on. Don't give anybody any inch space at all to come back and hammer you when it's not going well. And by the way, for Newcastle at the moment, it is not going particularly well. So nil-nil in that game.